All right, now we've got all the main posts inside and we've got the uh, ramps and uh, uh, runways over there. And then we've got all the rest of the parts over here. The next step is assembly, which we will get to here in a moment. After getting all the materials unloaded, we went ahead and started prepping everything, taking all the plastic off everything and inventorying parts. Then the next step is to set up the posts, which we have the posts now propped up on the end cap, about two feet from the end as Wildfire recommends. Then we'll slide the cross member on in place. Important to point out that our pump is going to be going at that end by that electrical outlet. And so the short pieces of the on the crossbar of the locking mechanism you can see there's a short piece that needs to be on that side the other two posts here we'll get in position after we get that post up I decided to rather than using a cherry picker as the manual recommends to lift the ends to just strap these to the tractor forks and hopefully we'll be able to just drive it in and set it in place uh, afterwards the next thing we're going to do is unbolt this other end uh, bracket as we've already removed this end bracket. Okay, now come over to this side. Ready? <laughs> Okay, it's floating. All right, so now we're going to put the crossbar on. You'll need an assistant for this who can lift the end. But first, we're going to set set the crossbar across here. And then make sure all of your plastic and things are out of the way. And then line up your posts approximately with your crossbar. And make sure your ends are regularly straight. You want to hang on to that end there. I'll move this one so it looks fairly straight. Use the spacers as they recommend to keep the primary latch open. Then we're going to pick up the crossbar and slide it on the post. And then you have to squeeze your secondary latch and then we'll slide it down to the end cap. And then lift and move the end cap. We'll work to do it together. I'll lift. You can move the end cap behind here now. Put the plastic thing back on there. Put the end cap back in. Oh, underneath my post. Okay, other side. Other side. Keep sliding it down to the six notch from the bottom. Should be that one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now pull out the spacer. Plastic thing. Just pull oh, I know up. that I'm in there. That's fine. Are we good? And slide it up to a box. One, two, three, four, five. We're in, the, we're in the fifth one from the bottom. You can slide up. I am. You're in the sixth. Four, five, six. You can rock. You can slide up. Yep. Yep. 
There we go. Good job. Okay. All right. Now we're going to get torsion on both posts, and we're going to stand it up right. One, two, three. Heavy. Pretty heavy. FYI, yep. <laughs> hit the bike up there. Oh, the bike. Oh. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Get it up all the way. Close quarters. It is. Alright, good job. Now we'll repeat for the same thing for the other end. Next step is to put in these blocks that allow us to slide up and down without scratching it. We scratched it a few times without it putting it on. That's just what happens. But these blocks go in. It's a notched, this is a notched one, and it needs to go in like that. There is one per post, one notched one. The one rest of them are all the same. There. It will go in these corners. Put the notched one in. That corner. You might need to reposition your post a bit to get them all in. Pull it like that. And then the rest of the four, the other four are all the same. This will allow your lift to slide up and down without resistance. This one's stuck. And they do in the manual say if they get stuck, you can use a wooden block to drive them in, but we found that they all are able to go in so far. Just by pulling on the post. Yeah, I'm just repositioning the post. Because the post needs to be in the center for all of them to fit in. There we go. The next step is we're going to be trying to navigate the yes. runways on. After you have the ramps in place, or before, you need to put the little stoppers on the top of these to keep the slides from coming out and secure those in place. And then when the ramps are in place, you need to make sure on both ends that you have this plate in place that the ramp and the stops for the wheels go to, and then you tension down the bolts on the ramp on all four corners. Next, we put the four end caps in place and prepare to attach the cables. Make sure that in the corner where your pump is going to be, you have one with the four holes drilled. The next thing that we had to do was get the cables routed where they need to go. And what we did is we first cut the cable ties, routed the cables through to all four corners. And then you're supposed to, with assistance, pull out the hydraulic cylinder. Uh, with these two strong men that are helping me, they could not pull out the cylinder, so we came up with our own method to pull out the cylinder. 
Dane, can you pull out the cylinder for us? So this will make your cables long enough. So that you can come and round the cable. So you get your you get your cable up through the hole and put your nut and washer on. Any more Dane or is that it? Okay. It's good enough. And then you go and do the same thing on all four corners. Making sure that your cable routes around this side of this wheel and around your secondary latch like so. And then we're going to go around and get these all about evenly spaced in the middle of the post. Middle of the threads. Next, we need to install the linkage mechanism that connects to the safety locks. This runs and attaches to a bar that runs all the way to the other end. It slides in on the end and there's a lock not that's on the back side that we've already put on. Then we go to the other end. On this end, we have also already inserted this with the release lever, which goes on here as well, and we'll attach here. Then underneath here, the linkage connects to this bar, which threads onto it. And you can actually grab, use your handle to help you thread it in part way. At this step, you don't need to get it very tight. You just need to get it threaded on part way. And now we'll go to the other end and do the same thing. All right, next we're going to connect the linkage to these brackets here. What we discovered is that this is already threaded, so and you need to adjust the length of these so things will line up. This goes in and threads in here. And that tightens down in there like we did on this one. Then there's a washer and lock washer and nut that goes on the back side. So first you snug up this end. Then you tighten the back side up. Turn your wrench around, it'll be easier for you. Mm -hmm. 
And then after we're done tightening up both of these, we'll go to the other end and do a similar thing on the handle end. Next, we're going to, we got prepared to hook up this end. Before we hook up these ends, we had to make sure that the connecting rod was tight in between and so there was not any slack in this back and forth by tightening the rod and the uh, lock nuts on both sides. In order to do that, you need to remove your bolts that hold on this bracket here, or the nut that holds on this bracket, so that this can spin while you're tightening it up. Now we can put this back together and assemble this end for the release mechanism. Next, we're going to install a cover over the cables, keep children from getting their fingers stuck in it. This is the fourth one that I've done. And I found that it's easiest if you put the bottom bolt in first because this cable creates quite a bit of tension on it. So if you insert the bottom bolt, and get that started, then the upper bolt, where you have to compress it, is already lined up. making it much easier to get in than if you try to put the top bolt in first. When there's weight on the cable, it'll pull it in so it's not hitting on the cover. There's two other bolts you put in on the other side. Next we're going to mount our pump bracket. In our application, we're going to mount it to the front so we can roll this all the way up to the wall at times if we'd like. We'd also like to possibly roll it out the garage door at times, which it may or may not fit. It's very nice how everything is pre-drilled and pre-threaded. You don't have to waste a lot of time figuring out. Everything seems to fit together well. important to put your lock washers in too. Now that we've got our bracket that mount the motor on, we will put the motor unit up on here. Notice how this still wiggles some. Once there's weight on the lift, it'll hold it down and that will secure that top capping better. But for now, as an assistant, is nice to have for this step someone who can put the bolts in. have some weight to it, it's not that bad, but Once your bolts are on, you're safe and then you can secure it down. Next you take your hydraulic line from your cylinder and stick it through the hole 
in the ramp. First, you have to remove a nut that you put back on and tighten up out here. and snug it up on the outside. Next step is taking the hydraulic hose and it will mount onto your line. Next, hook your hydraulic hose to your pump. The next thing that is in the process is putting in the rolling tray, which Dane is sitting in now. That's one use for it is for rolling children around. But the other, the other use is it's a tray jack. You can actually use it to jack up the car. First you set the tray across the track and then you adjust the wheel length. Then there's these two locks that go on either side that bolt on and then you position those in place. Let's see which boy gets his in first. Dane has his bolts in, but I may have put one in first, and Mike is tightening his as he goes, so. To mount your wheel assembly, you get your unit, and you roll it into place, and you start the pin. And there you go. When the weight of the lift comes down, it will lift the post off the ground, but it takes a lot of weight.